All right, now that we've looked a little bit at the Clostridium botulinum, let's take a look at ourselves as Homo sapiens. And in particular, we're going to take a closer look at our nervous system and how it interacts with our mus muscular system. So in case you don't remember the structure of a neuron, here we have the nerve cell body, and signals come into the nerve cell body through these structures called dendrites. And they leave, uh, signals leave this nerve cell body through an axon, which can then split into multiple areas. There's usually only one axon, but then that can split at the end. Dendrites, you can have one or you can have many. And that's, again, what's demonstrated here. Now at the very end of the axon, is an area that opens up and this is where it connects with another nerve cell with muscle with um, a gland and it sends signals and we will take a close look at this area called the synapse where signals are sent to the connecting structure and these would be the axon terminals and we have a couple of names for those depending on what we're connecting with first there are the neuromuscular junction clearly it's where the nerve interacts with the muscle, and usually this ends on a skeletal muscle, um, which is under voluntary control. Um, or it is an autonomic synapse, and this can end on a gland or a smooth muscle, and neither of these things are truly under our voluntary control. So when a gland secretes, that's not under voluntary control, usually. So we're going to look at a couple pictures of what axons terminals looks like. These, this structure here, 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 these are skeletal muscles. And this is, black structure is an axon, and it's branching off here. And then we have these areas here, and those are called terminal buttons. And that's th where the synapse is, and we're going to take more look at that up close. Um, this is just a different way of looking at the same thing. We have the axons stained here in green, and these terminal buttons are stained in the orange. And in the background, if you have really good eyesight, you can see the skeletal muscle here. This image is one of my favorite images of all time, and this is made in the scanning electron microscope. This structure here is the skeletal muscle, and this is the axon, and this is the terminal uh, button. This is the neuromuscular junction right here, and we're going to take a close-up look at what's happening here and then how botulism takes advantage of this structure in particular. So when we look at this very, very up close, we are looking here at muscle in this lower area here. And you can see that the muscle actually has fingers projecting off the top. Now most of us like to think that cells are nice and smooth, but not usually. Most of the time cells are a little fuzzy on the outside. They're trying to create more connections, something like a cush ball, one of those hairy balls you can buy in the store um, to play with. But up here is where the nerve is ending, and this is uh, the terminal buttons. And we can see these small circles here, and we call these vesicles, and these vesicles are filled with proteins that when they are released from here can interact with the muscle, and those proteins can tell this muscle to contract. So that's what we're going to see. Here's just another close-up of the same thing. This is the muscle down here. This is a little space in between them. That's called a cleft and this is where the nerve is ending. So this area right here is the synapse. These are those small vesicles containing neurotransmitter that's going to tell this muscle to contract. There are a lot of words on this slide and you can stop this video if you want and read it more fully yourself, but this is just reiterating that we have a cell body, we have the axon, and so we've created some proteins called neurotransmitters and they're being shipped down to this synapse. So that's what we see up close here, the synaptic cleft. And so this is where we have these vesicles filled with the neurotransmitter. These vesicles have to fuse with this membrane, release the protein. The protein is recognized here on the surface of the muscle in our case, and then the muscle contracts. So again, we're going to look at this really up close so we know how botulism works. Here, we're looking at the same thing. This is much more up close. This structure, the green structure, is plasma membrane, and that's what surrounds these vesicles and keeps these uh, pro neurotransmitter proteins safely inside, and in this case, it's acetylcholine. So it turns out, to get one of these vesicles to dock and to fuse with the outer membrane of the axon, it has to sort of throw a rope around 
onto a dock like you can imagine a boat and you tie that rope and it pulls the boat closer and that's exactly what's happening here and these proteins happen to be called snare proteins there's uh, several of them here but they interact in such a way that it pulls this vesicle close it can fuse with the membrane and release this we didn't know about the existence of these proteins until people were trying to understand how Botox works and that's because the botulism toxin actually binds very strongly to these proteins so this is a case where understanding pathology helps us understand how things work normally so this is normal transmitter release now when we have a botulism neurotoxin in the vicinity what happens is the botulism neurotoxin which is a protein can bind very specifically onto the membrane and that this neurotoxin can get into the uh, synapse here, into the postsynaptic or the presynaptic terminal end here. It comes in, and that protein breaks apart these snares, so these vesicles cannot dock, they cannot release their acetylcholine, and therefore the muscle cannot receive the signal to contract. And that is why we end up with flaccid paralysis. The muscle cannot contract at all because it's not receiving the signal thanks to this neurotoxin. And that's why people die, because they can't breathe. But like I said, if we can use it in even smaller amounts, we've been able to use this to our advantage and make medical and cosmetic advances, and we're going to take a look at that now.